All of us want to find guitars that punch way out of their weight class. We want to find guitars that have tons of great features, but are still really affordable. So this guitar is a total sleeper. Honestly, this is probably the only of this model I've seen. This is my friend Carl's Blue Ridge 341. Blue Ridge is an amazing guitar company. Listen, before Eastman, there was Blue Ridge. If it was 2005, 2006, and you wanted a guitar that had tons of classic vibe, that played really well, that had really cool features, but you had less than $1,000, this was absolutely your best bet. This is the size of a 00 12 fret from Martin. Or for Huss and Dalton, this would be a 00 SP. If you've seen that video that I did on the Jefferson guitar, this guitar is the same size. So this guitar has a couple critical features that make it very badass. Very cool, tons of value for what it's worth. So first, it's ebony fingerboard, ebony bridge, it has a pyramid bridge, which is so freaking cool. It has 12 frets, like I said, ebony board. It's a solid spruce top and it's solid mahogany back and sides. It has a good chunky 12 fret neck and a slot headstock. There are certain things on this that feel very vintage and very right. The square slot heads are very cool. Uh, it's one of those things that on old, on very old Martins, they were all squared off in the slots instead of being rounded. I think rounded's more in the 60s. I'm sure someone can correct me. I'm not 100% on that. Retail on this was about $1,000, and that put the sales price, that map pricing, somewhere around $750, $800 when it was new. It has a very cool kind of Geb style Martin case with crushed velvet. Uh, and so it is the materials that you would hope for in a guitar two or three times this price. I think for a Martin, uh, an 018 S, I don't know if they still make that version, but I would assume to get a Martin in the same spec, you'd be around $2,500 to get a Santa Cruz or to get a Collings or to get a Bourgeois or a Huss and Dalton. You're going to be in that three to $4,000 range pretty easily. Um, even with mahogany back and sides. This guitar compared to a Huss and Dalton or a Bourgeois or a Collings, you're not going to get the same materials. You will get the same kind of materials, uh, but there are going to be critical differences. So here are a couple critical differences that make this guitar much more affordable. First, you can just tell in the quality of the woods that they're different. Um, so with this, the spruce, it's a very pretty spruce, but it doesn't have the same uh, impeccable kind of feel. This, it's not the same grade as one of the premier builders would build. It is ebony on the bridge and the fingerboard, but they use just, there's a little bit of sapwood down here on the first fret, which I think is super cool and looks very cool. One of the absolute biggest differences that I feel when I pick up a Blue Ridge is that the finish, the finish is really thick and it's really sticky, but my brain just immediately knows the difference between a premier level instrument and this. Uh, and so the finish feels very different. The other big thing you're gonna notice is that the construction of the neck, so right here where the neck heel joins the neck, uh, there's a joint, and then down here where the headstock joins the end, uh, there's another joint where they graft on. Actually, as I'm looking at it, it just grafts. Basically, this piece of wood just goes straight, which means the majority of the neck would came out of one piece of wood, which it is a better and more conservative way. It's more probably responsible. Instead of having a giant piece of wood and you're cutting away a lot of that, uh, you'd probably get less drop, which for us, we interpret that as responsibility, but probably on a manufacturer, it's we buy less wood if we change the way that we cut the necks. I have always loved Blue Ridge guitars, but I've never owned one. And the reason I haven't owned one is twofold. One is the finish always feels a little tacky, and so I've held off on buying them. And then the other thing is that they're always just a little too ornate for me. Uh, they usually do a lot of inlay on the headstock. So when you see them, that's one of the biggest giveaways that it's a Blue Ridge, is just this like incredible amount of inlay. And it's cool, but to me, it just, it always throws off my vibe. One of the things I appreciate most about this model is that they did, they took a couple nods to the original Martin style, where they would have the logo on the back of the headstock. The 14 year old, 15 year old me thought that that was annoying because I wanted to look at a guitar and know what it was right away. 
but I love the subtlety of this, that on the back of the headstock, and if there's a sticker inside, but you would not know what this guitar was, which I played up on my Instagram a couple days ago. I just posted a picture of this guitar and said, what is it? And everyone saw this guitar and they assumed that it must be a Martin, a Bourgeois, a custom of some sort, uh, or a custom shop. And what's amazing is this is the guitar that packs a serious punch. Used value on this is gonna be six, $700, I would bet. This guitar does punch above its pay grade, but does it sound as good as a Hassan Dalton or a Martin of the same size and the same shape? So let's check it out. This guitar is really incredible to play. Uh, I've played it pretty much nonstop for the last three or four days that we've had it here at the house. It had very dead strings, and I knew that I was gonna like it when I even loved it with the thumpiest of dead strings. It's a short scale, it's a very small body, it's a 12 fret neck. One thing I found is that there seems, and I haven't measured it, but it feels like there's more distance because the scale length is shorter, but the body is longer. Usually when you have a smaller guitar, it means less volume or less low end. But what's cool is just as the geometry is shifted and as I play it and it's a smaller one, I end up playing more over the sound hole, which does sound really mellow and bassy. It's really cool. And then you can also, you can move your hand back and you can get a lot more volume. And the X bracing is about here. Uh, so it's still, you've got a pretty big, you've got a pretty big soundboard behind it. It sounds really good. The other thing that's really helpful is that this is a small guitar, but it has a really big neck. It's not a V shape. That's one of the things is it does not feel when you're playing, it doesn't feel like a Martin, uh, but it feels like a really cool parlor guitar. Uh, it's a U shaped. It's a pretty big neck, feels more like a classical guitar. Um, it does have a radius fretboard. With such a big neck on a small guitar, it makes you feel, it makes it feel more substantial. This guitar is both really fun to restring, but also a headache. If it were me and if it was my guitar, I would put coated strings on it, so I only had to change them a couple times a year. This guitar is really fun to play and it just sounds wonderful. It's a very dynamic guitar. It's really surprising. It totally sounds better than anything else I would put up in that five to six, $700 range. Everybody is looking for guitars that punch above their weight class. And Blue Ridge is a really great option if you're looking for a guitar that has great features, great quality, but is still pretty affordable. So Blue Ridge, generally speaking, the two digit model numbers are solid tops, laminate back and sides, and the three digit are all solid. 
So the BR40, the BR60, and the BR70. So basically it looks like a Martin D18, looks like a Martin D28, looks like a Martin D41. The Blue Ridge BR140 looks a lot like a D18. The 160 looks a lot like a D28. Uh, and then the 180 looks like a D45. We didn't sell many of those. And then you get into like, there's a 240, a 260, a 280. To me, they are about the best guitar you're gonna get under $1,000. They play really well, they sound really good. With that said, they can be a little cheesy, a little over the top, they can have a little too much pearl, uh, and for me that is a thing. For other people, too much is never enough when it comes to abalone. But I hope you go and you find really badass guitars and gear. Set up a reverb listing so that you see when Blue Ridge guitars come up. That is a great tool to help you find cool guitars and gear that you're after. So if you dig this video, if you like Blue Ridge guitars, make sure to like and subscribe down below and then send me a message if you have questions, comments, slanderous remarks. Okay, let's hold the slanderous remarks, but I hope you find great guitars and gear and use me as your guitar guide if you need help. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I'll see you guys later.